Hello, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to calculate the exit velocity of the exhaust on a converging diverging nozzle or a rocket engine nozzle or something of that type. So this is just an example drawing and we're gonna calculate the velocity coming out the exit of the nozzle. So I'm not gonna derive the equation, but I'm just gonna give it to you, velocity at the exit equals the square root, and we'll go over what these variables mean in a second. T R divided by M times two gamma divided by gamma minus one. The square and in brackets here at one minus P E divided by P two gamma minus one divided by gamma. That's the exponent there. So our T variable equals the absolute pressure. So absolute just means in the terms of um, Kelvin at the inlet. So this is like in the combustion chamber. What is the temperature in the combustion chamber? And we know that for a converging diverging nozzle, we have high temperature low pressure, or no, high pressure too. High temperature, high pressure, low velocity, and then out here at the exit we have relatively low temperature, low pressure, and high velocity. If you want to see some derivations of some of these relationships between velocity, pressure, density, you can go check one of my other videos that show those derivations. But for now, we'll just stick with this. Our value for R, this is the universal gas constant, which is 813.4, 8,314.5 joules per kilomole Kelvin. And don't confuse this with the other kind of R, which is a more of a specific gas constant. Um, so M equals the molar mass. Um, so if you calculate, usually you just usually you represent it with an R. Then this universal gas constant you can represent with like an R, with like a little hat on it maybe, like a unit vector R. I don't know, divided by the molar mass, and that equals another R. But for this, for this, for this question, this is what we're going to use for that because we're also including the molar mass in this calculation. The gamma equals the isentropic expansion factor, which is CP over CV. So this is like the specific heat capacity at a constant pressure, specific heat capacity over a constant volume. And this will this changes depending on what kind of gas you're using. So air is approximately 1.4 for air. Some other gases you'll see in a question will do. It's approximately 1.22. It just varies depending on gas, what gas you're using. Your PE, that is the absolute pressure at the inlet, which we can think of that as a combustion chamber, so here. So that's going to be a very large number. Oh, I misspoke. P is the absolute pressure of gas at nozzle. Sorry, I apologize. P is the absolute pressure of gas at nozzle. So that's low. So that would be usually, if it's well designed, the pressure at the exit is approximately atmospheric pressure, or it'd be like 101,000 kilopascals or 0.1 megapascals, or something along that. And then our just P variable is the absolute pressure at inlet. So then this is our large pressure in here, okay? So I misspoke. This is PE out here, this is P. 
Okay, so let's do a quick um, calculation to see what we get. So this is for the F1 engine. which was the engine in the Saturn V rocket. Um, so we do VE equals square root. Uh, temperature we can use would be like 3,500 Kelvin times 813, 8,314.5. And that would be joules per kilomole Kelvin divided by molar mass, which is 22 kilograms per kilomole Kelvin for the gas that they are using. 2 times 1.22, which is what the value, the isentropic expansion factor value for the gas we're using. So divided by 1.22 minus 1. We're in brackets here. 1 minus parentheses. Let's just close that off. Let's close that off. Let's be PE, which would be. 0.1 megapascals, so 0.1 megapascals, approximately you know 100,000 pascals, which is about sea level, divided by 7 megapascals, which is the pressure at the inlet, so here, so high temperature, high pressure, and that multiplied, or that to raise to the gamma minus one divided by gamma. Plug this calculation in your calculator and you get the velocity at the exit equals 2,802 meters per second, which is right in the range of a value that you can look for. So now we're gonna talk about the rocket thrust equation, which is this equation right here. So the force of thrust, so units of newtons, equals the mass flow rate times the velocity at the exit, plus the pressure difference between the exit of the nozzle and the ambient air pressure times the area of the exit. This is kind of the, also the equation, this is a general equation for thrust here, but for a rocket we're assuming that the original velocity of the air and the original mass flow rate, it kind of starts at zero. So we can kind of ignore this, and we're just left with this difference of pressures and the mass flow rate at the exit. If we can, we can divide this whole equation by the mass flow rate, and we're left with force divided by mass flow rate equals velocity at the exit, plus the pressure difference, okay? And then this equation right here, this is the equivalent velocity. So VEQ equals this right here, okay? If the, these, if PE equals PO, there's perfectly expanded nozzle, so the pressure at the exit is the exact same as the pressure at the ambient air temperature. This reduces to just the force of thrust equals m dot times velocity equivalent. Velocity equivalent is also important to know because we can use it in calculating the specific impulse. But before we do that, we're gonna do a quick calculation here because I wanna to try to calculate the density of the air leaving in the F1 rocket engine nozzle. And we know the force, we can just kind of look up in a general value for that, which is 6,770 newtons times mass flow rate, which would be density times velocity. So let me write that equation density, that's a row, times velocity at the exit, times area. And we're saying that the equivalent velocity is the same as the velocity at the exit, times 28.02 meters per second, 
times the area, which is 3.7 meters squared, times another 2802 meters per second. Do this in a calculator, we get a density equals 0.233 kilograms per meter cubed. All right, that's good to know. So now we want to talk about a specific impulse, which is the equation for that, which is ISP, the symbol for that, equals force divided by m dot times gravity, or divided by gravity, which then can also be written as velocity equivalent divided by gravity. So again, for the F1 rocket engine, our equivalent velocity we say is 2802 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. And that leaves us with a specific impulse in the units, we'll calculate the unit seconds, 286, and the units are seconds, because meters cancel, seconds cancel, that goes up to the top, 286 seconds, which is a specific impulse, which is about in the range of, if you looked up a value for the F1 rocket engine.